Hi, I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to talk about and shoot and test some arrows for cloud archery. So we're going to just talk about where we're up to with this whole experiment that we've been doing with arrows. So I'm currently shooting 51 pounds, 29 inches, and the arrows I'm shooting are these ones. These are Pandera CA320. They're a barreled aluminium carbon arrow like an X10. 500 spine, 120 grain points, and they are spot on. The problem is, as soon as I up my poundage, these arrows are no good, and the 400, arrows, 400 spine arrows I got um, with the same points are too stiff and I can't get them to work. Right, so that's the back part of the video, past videos we've done. Now, also for cloud archery, I, take, I took down this arrow, the CA320, also one with spin wings to compare spin wings and veins over 165 meters. I took down these arrows, these are the Pandaris Ice Point with 120 grain points with spin wings. And I took down these ones, these McKinney 400s with 200 grain point. Now, all these arrows should 195, about 195 feet per second, so they're roughly the same weight. And unfortunately for me, they all shot about 20 meters past the end of the target. So they're coming in too flat. I need them sticking up. I need them shooting slower. So then I'm like, well, what do I do? So with the 400s, 400s with 200 grain points were already too stiff. So I can't wind down the poundage and make these ones work. So they're, they're gone. Um, the ice point. I could wind down the poundage, but then I'm like, well, I didn't have my lighter poundage limbs. I didn't really know what to do and how much am I going to have to wind it down. I was like, I'm in a bit of predicament. So these two were pretty much in the same boat. Um, now, should should make a note that the uh, McKinney's with 200 grain points were the closest to the clout, so they were the best angle. And I did try them and I did get them to work. However, they're coming in too flat, so I get too much variation in the um, distance-wise because it's hitting a flat target on the ground. So then that got me thinking. These are the arrows I used to shoot. These are Tornadoes. They're quite a heavy carbon arrow with a, about 170 grain point about three years ago. And I think I was shooting about 36 pounds back then and they worked fine. Um, the tune wasn't perfect. I think they were too stiff um, back then. But these still shoot 190, grain, 190 feet per second so that wasn't helping me. But I'm like, well... 400's too stiff, so let's maybe go to 500. I looked about what arrows are available. I wanted low cost, because I wanted, don't want to spend lots of money on them. I wanted heavy. So then that got me to these arrows. These are a Pandaris Infinity. They're a 4.2 millimeter carbon arrow, which is like a carbon one, a Victory VAP, whatever, thin carbon arrow. So that's what these are. $65 a dozen. I fitted the 200 grain points. Um, they've got a bony neff knock in the back end and to increase the weight if i can get these things out so these knocks are not glued in they're just a pressure fit i fitted this this is clothesline this is my clothesline literally um, i chopped up my clothesline i stuck it in the back of my arrow and it fits quite nice as you can see it's quite a nice fit now this really increased the weight of the arrow so much so the arrow shoot 160 feet per second. Um, so I'm like, well, this should be pretty good. Um, I tested that last night in the um, pouring rain, which we had here. So now we're going to go through the whole experiment of tuning them and seeing if we can get them to work. So bear in mind, the 400s didn't work, which were lighter. These are slower because they're heavier. So now we want to see how they group and how we get the tune right. Now I have shot them, um, I shot them last night in the rain, and they shot to the left. The arrow shooting to the left will indi generally indicate their weak spine, um, shooting to the right, generally stiff spine. So we're going to show you them being shot, we're gonna, so we need, to, we need them to group, that's the first thing. We need them to tune and group. So they need to be for basically target archery, but they want to be slower. Slow enough so we can shoot long distance, 165 metres, that's the aim. So we're going to get these arrows to work. So let's sh um, shoot some arrows. We're going to shoot at 15 meters. And we're going to show you what they group like. Um, 
I've done this before, but I didn't press play. I didn't press record on the video, so let's try it again. A bit about these arrows, I use the Pandera spin wings with them. Now they're very much like a spider vein. Um, the way they feel, the 3M tape's different and the wrapping tape is different. Which is different to the Chinese spin wing, which was kind of interesting for me because I thought they'd be the same. I would have thought they'd come out in the same factory. But they're clearly different. They had different tape and different 3M tape that you stick it on but they were very nice to stick and I've got no problems with them and the price is good so and they seem quite stiff so I thought that was a good thing I was rather I really rather like them so all right so the bow is 51 pounds 29 inches these are 500 spine arrows with weight put down the thing I think the weight was about 600 grains um, but that's just from the top of my head um, so let's try it now if you shoot a light poundage say one of the options would be to shoot a light poundage bow and the arrows can drop in and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff the advantage of shooting a high poundage bow is your release is going to be cleaner um, and the air is going to have more weight so it's going, not going to get affected by the wind as much if it's a windy day. So although I may fatigue on the day and be struggling, that's the type of stuff you think. That's a, what you've got to consider when you're shooting clout and when you shoot just in general. But I've been shooting 51 pounds for target and that's what I'm practicing with so that's pretty much where I wanted to go into this competition with. Just shoot one more so you can see the group. Right, so I'm pretty happy with the group. The group's okay. The bow's noticeably quieter. It's like really, really quiet. And the arrows to pull out of the target are really hard now because it's the same amount of energy coming out of the bow, but obviously less is going to noise now and more is going to the arrow. So it's actually harder to pull your arrow out. It could be the arrows are thicker um, than the 3.2 millimeters. Okay, so this is the bear shaft. Now when you shoot a bear shaft um, arrow, if it shoots to the left, the arrow is too stiff. If it shoots to the right, the arrow is too weak. Now to fix it up, you can move your plunger in and out. Um, or you can change the poundage of your bow, or you can change your point weight, which we've already been experimenting with. So let's just show you how this one shoots. Now you can see the arrow is flies absolutely horribly out the bow and it's massively to the right so for some reason even though the arrow is a lot slower it's spining up that it's very weak so let's just go and show you that All right look at the angle of the bear shaft it's hitting the bow at you know 90 degrees it's like terrible um, and one of the spin wheels came off um, like it's it's horrible it's, it's high and it's way out so you've got a couple of options here if this is the one bow you have you could move the plunger button this way to the left you can increase the tension of the plunger button which has the same effect of moving to the left to try and bring this in and out now we've been experimenting that with in other videos that we've just done over the past two days and we had very little impact with that so I suggest you're probably gonna get about as much impact as I got so now so what I could do here is this indicates the bow is to the arrows are too weak so I could wind down the bow now remember when you wind down a bow you've only got so much adjustment to do and I don't really want to play with um, my plunger tension and all that sort of stuff because this is my target bow 
So for this purpose, I actually purchased another bow. So which I, which I can use for tuning in this exact purpose. So I can play with it and try and get these arrows to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the Argon X, the red one, and we're going to experiment with that bow and see if we can get it to work with these arrows. So fingers crossed. It's so hard to get a recurve to shoot right when people go, oh, look, it's just this and that. It's not that easy and people go, yes, it is. You probably just got really, really lucky that the shop gave you the arrows and they, you know, were like, this worked for me and it will work for you. But there's a huge chance you're going to have the problems I've been having and getting it to work. And so, like, if I just had 450s with the right, you know, 120 grain point, I'd be on, in the money. The problem is I need these arrows heavier, so now it's created more issues for me. So let's set up the red Argon X and see how we go. Okay, so I've got the red riser. Now I had a set of 42 pound limbs because I've been moving up in poundage. I keep my old limbs just in case I like need, have some tuning issues and all that. So I've sold off my 40 pound limbs, but I've still got 42 and 44. The 42 pound limbs are on my fingers, 49 pounds. So it's basically the same setup, just a different riser and a set of 42 pound limbs. 49 pounds in the fingers, 29 inches, 500 spine arrows. Now I have shot these, I just shot it before I'm shooting this video. The sights went to the right, which means they were stiffer for this bow because the poundage is less, two pounds left. So I've moved my sight in, which is a really good sign. So, and I'm also, the arrows were significantly lower on the target. And I mean, like, instead of hitting the gold, they hit low red. So that's how much, the two pounds, and it might be the bow setup or whatever it was, that's how much made it effect. Again, the bow feels extremely quiet. Um, now I don't have pins in these knocks because I'm shooting clout so I'm not going to need pins because I'm not going to Robin Hood the arrow. Um, but if you're going to practice with them just try not to Robin Hood the back ends because with pins, without pins you're not going to protect the arrow. Now I did have a choice of getting a different riser rather than an Argon X and there was some in the shop I wanted to, to try but I thought look for, to get the same grip and the same feel of the bow you best have the same setup. So basically this bow is to test with and the other bow is to shoot with. We'll shoot one more just so you can see the group. My neighbour's cooking a barbecue and it smells so good. If you like meat. I clearly like meat, so. Which is always a problem if you're on a dating website and there's a um, person who's a vegan and you're like, ah, it's not gonna work out. Maybe it would, but it's not going to work out. Meat tastes too yummy. Okay. <laughs> um, so the bear shaft. Now, two pounds less. Last time it was you know, 12 inches, close to that. Um, to the right. It was a long way to the right. And high. Alright, let's go and take a look. Okay, so despite the really weird angle that the bear shaft is, it's pretty much in line 
with the fletched arrows and the fletched arrow grouping is pretty good. I'd be very, very happy shooting this group um, at 18 meters and we're at about 15, so it's pretty much the same. So with that, I'm feeling very, very happy. So that's a really good, it's a really good thing. So now all I have to test is how these arrows land at 165 meters and I'm on the money. It's taken me hours and hours to get to this spot and I've still got to sight the bow in at 165 meters, sight in at 160 meters, sight in at 170 meters. So much time. Now, people are going to say, well, you own an archery shop, so it's easy for you. Okay. I'm going to say to, to you, if you're thinking about that sort of stuff, think about what your goals are. I've been working my butt off for five years to win this state competition. Five years, I sit here every night shooting, 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 and I've been pipped at the post by a person who shoots um, personal best, and I've shot personal best, and it's like, you know, good on him, it's like, well done, he's won, you know, seven years in a row. But it's like, you put so much time and effort in. And it's like, well, those arrows cost me a hundred bucks. It cost me $50 worth of petrol to drive to the shoot on Sunday to shoot my cloud arrows to find out they were too light. And it took me about four hours worth of my time to work out those arrows were traveling too fast. So put into your perspective about how much time and effort you put in and how badly you want to achieve your goal. Now I may not I may not achieve my goal. I might get beaten by someone else on the shooting line, someone who's put in no time. Completely possible. But the thing is I put in all this time and effort to make this work. It's like what have I let slip so that I get there and I have and I have not prepared. So you've got to go there and go, I've got the tools if something breaks, I've got it covered. I've got my sight settings in plaque, I've got my right clothes on, I've got liquids that I need in case I get dehydrated, foods in case my sugar levels drop. You've got to make sure you've got everything covered if you put the time in. If you put the time into a project, you want to see it successful. It's not about the $2 medal, which most times I don't even get when I win, because most times they don't have them. Um, it's not about that. It's about, I put the time in to, to do well. I put as much time and as much effort as I could to do well. And I want to do well. So I'm going to say to you, if you're putting your time into archery or whatever you're putting your time in, put your time in to be successful. Have a plan. And this has taken me a lot longer than I thought it would do, would to get to this point. Like... I got to the clout and I was like, what do I do now? I literally sat there, I shot the th three, four arrows, I was like, what do I do now? I'm like, completely confused. And you don't want that. You want to have a plan and go, this is my plan of attack. So, anyway, I hope that's been useful. Um, so now I've got to go and find a spot to shoot 165, which I did scope out after work today. Um... So I, I found a spot to shoot 165 metres. So now I'll take this set up at some point in time uh, and go and lob, a, lob these arrows at 165 and see my noisy poodle. Um, <laughs> I've got no idea what she's barking at. She only barks if I'm on the video. Because she thinks there's someone I'm talking to and she can't see them. Anyway, um, so now I've got to find a spot. Go and shoot 165, make sure they hit an angle and get some sight scenes either side. And then on Sunday, I'll probably go back to the club who's, who's holding the clout and have another practice and hopefully score some arrows and see what sort of score I shoot with these arrows. So I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies and that's my noisy poodle, Marla, that you probably hear on most videos. Marla. She's a girl. You know boy dogs are not like that. They're not. I've had boys and I've had girls. That's a girl dog. Anyway. 
Anyway, I'm Stephen Hare from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching. Bye.